intermolecular forces or IMFs are incredibly important to biomolecules. In this particular video, we're going to focus on the intermolecular forces between a folded protein structure and drugs. As we're talking about the interactions between drugs and proteins, I wanted to remind you that there's four different levels of protein structure. We are going to be focused on the tertiary structure of the protein, the folded biologically relevant structure of the protein as it interacts with drug molecules. In previous videos, we've talked about how the secondary structure of a protein is held together by intermolecular forces, We've talked about how the tertiary structure of a protein is held together by intermolecular forces. In this video, we're going to focus on how that folded tertiary structure interacts with other molecules, also by intermolecular uh, forces. And I'm going to show you two different examples of this. The first example is shown here, um, and this is the interaction between methotrexate, which is an anti-cancer drug, and the protein enzyme dihydro folate reductase. Dihydrofolate reductase is a protein whose tertiary structure has been determined by x-ray crystallography. Um, and because it has been, uh, it's easy to look at what the active site might look like and to think about what residues are important in the active site. In this particular case, the structure has also been crystallized with the drug methotrexate bound to it. And that's what's shown in this slide. So methotrexate is shown here in the black. And what surrounds this in the bluish color is the part of the, of the protein that's involved in that drug interaction. And if you look at methotrexate, it's this purine ring, the purine moiety down on the left-hand side of this molecule that interacts with the protein in a really intricate series of hydrogen bonds. So if you look at the protein tryptophan 21, the NH of tryptophan 21 is hydrogen bonded to a water molecule, and that water molecule is bonded to methotrexate. Aspartic acid 26 is also hydrogen bonded to that water molecule, which is bonded to methotrexate. Aspartic acid 26 is also directly hydrogen bonded in two different ways to methotrexate. Threonine 116, the OH side train, is both hydrogen bonded to aspartic acid 26 as well as to a water molecule, and that water molecule is hydrogen bonded to methotrexate. Um, leucine 114, the carbonyl oxygen um, in the backbone, is hydrogen bonded to water, which is bonded, hydrogen bonded to methotrexate. And then leucine 4 and alanine 97, both of their carbonyl oxygens of the backbone are directly hydrogen bonded to methotrexate. So there's this incredibly intricate, complex um, series of hydrogen bonds between protein backbone, protein side chains, and protein to water molecules that then hydrogen bond to methotrexate to allow methotrexate to bind in the active site of dihydrofolate reductase and inhibit it. What's normally bonded to dihydrofolate reductase is dihydrofolate. And dihydrofolate I've shown uh, in the upper part of this screen and methotrexate in the bottom part of this screen. And you can see that the right-hand sides of these oops, let me try that again. The right-hand sides of these molecules are really similar to each other. So we've got this part of dihydrofolate reductase and methotrexate that look really similar. What's different is the heterocyclic rings on the left-hand part of this. Um, and that allows methotrexate to actually bind into the active site of dihydrofolate reductase and inhibit it. So I don't want you to think that only hydrogen bonding is important in terms of drugs or other molecules interacting with proteins. So I'm going to show you one more example. The example that I'm going to show here is the protein enzyme carboxypeptidase A. Um, carboxypeptidase A is a, a protein enzyme that has been crystallized. And so again, it's this crystal structure bound to a dipeptide in this case that I'm going to show here. Um, carboxypeptidase A is a protein enzyme that cuts peptide bonds. It is similar enough to angiotensin converting enzyme that the crystal structure of carboxypeptidase A was used to discover inhibitors 
for angiotensin converting enzyme, which are now being used as, uh, as drugs for high blood pressure. So if you look at this crystal structure, what you can see is the dipeptide here, and this is a glycine tyrosine dipeptide, and you can see the interactions that it has with the protein. So one of these interactions is up here, it's called a nonpolar pocket of the protein, and this hydrophobic aromatic ring of tyrosine side chain is important for making Van der Waals interactions in that pocket. A phenylalanine also works in that pocket. The OH of tyrosine is not important. If you look down here, there's a zinc ion, zinc 2 plus, that's bounded to a histidine side chain, a glutamic acid side chain, and another histidine side chain to hold it in place in carboxypeptidase A. And that coordinates to a carbonyl oxygen of the backbone of the dipeptide as it's bond, as it's bonded in the active site. And this is oriented in a way that this is the bond between carbon and nitrogen that's going to be cleaved by this enzyme. So zinc is really important for holding it in place. Glutamic acid 270 is uh, the side chain of that. It's coordinated to a water molecule. Um, that's then hydrogen bonded to the dipeptide in that active site. Um, tyrosine 248, the side chain of that is directly hydrogen bonded to the backbone of the peptide that's going to be cleaved. And then arginine 145 with its positively charged side chain has ion-ion interactions with a negatively charged uh, portion of the dipeptide that's bonded in that pocket. So if you look at this example of a drug bonded to a protein. There's hydrogen bonds, there's uh, Van der Waals interactions, there's ion-ion interactions, and there's interactions with uh, metal ions. So the whole gamut of um, intermolecular forces are important. So as we're thinking about proteins, in the secondary structure we talked about backbone hydrogen bonding being important. In the tertiary structure we talked about um, a hydrophobic collapse of side chains coming to the interior of a globular soluble protein being important, as well as polar residues on the outside interacting with water. And as we start to think now about how proteins interact with other biomolecules, all of the types of intermolecular forces that you can think about are going to be important. And what's important at any particular time depends on what protein you're looking at and what ligand it's bounded to.